We're going to go ahead and get started. I hate to interrupt. Uh, it sounds like everyone's having a wonderful time at their tables. Uh, but I think, we, you know, to get you out here in a manageable time uh, before the sun sinks, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get this going. Uh, basically, welcome to the Raymond Simon Institute for Public Relations and Journalism's annuals, annual awards ceremony. I'm Patricia Swan, the Dean of the School of Business and Justice Studies and the Associate Professor of Public Relations. Uh, for those of you who may not know about our program's history, we have quite a story to tell. Raymond Simon came to Utica College in 1949, and he was uh, brought to establish our public relations program. It is one of the first undergraduate uh, programs in public relations to be offered in the nation. After a distinguished 36-year career in education, during which time he authors some of the most influential public relations textbooks and had a significant impact on hundreds of public relations uh, uh, students who later became leaders in our profession, of which one of them is here this morning. Uh, we, he retired in 1985. In honor of his contributions uh, to the field of public relations education, as well as his exemplar work as a mentor to students, the Raymond Simon Institute of Public Relations and Journalism was formed. And uh, it is for that reason we are here uh, today to recognize our students and our parents and family members who have contributed to the educational process of these wonderful young people. I'd like to right now introduce to you uh, Ray Simon's wife, Lynn Simon. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Ray Simon, who is 95, is at home resting and we're giving him this, the, the day off. Uh, so we hope that uh, he'll be back with us maybe next year. But anyway, we just wanted to recognize uh, Lynn, and, and we know that Ray Simon is here in spirit. Uh, I'd like to introduce the following uh, Raymond Simon <coughs> Institute Board of Trustees who have uh, uh, joined us this morning. We have at this table Bob Baber, <laughs> Michelle Adams, right over here. Jim Leash, who is our emeritus uh, trustee. Where are you, Jim? Right over here. And at the table, we have RSI Executive Director, Professor of Journalism, Kim Landon. She has allowed me to do the opening remarks with trepidation, I might add, probably. <laughs> Uh, because uh, Professor Landon has just recently undergone a knee replacement and so her uh, physical therapist has given her strict orders to please stay off your feet as much as possible because it's just been recent and she's trying to get back on her feet so that we can bring her back in the fall. So we're glad you're here, Kim. Okay. Uh, during the ceremony, we'll be presenting a new award in honor of Duncan McCauley, who was an original member of the RSI Board of Trustees. And you'll hear more about Duncan in just a few minutes, but I'd like to acknowledge the family members who have come here uh, this morning, this table right here, so welcome. I also want to personally welcome the parents, relatives, and friends of the students that we are honoring today. Uh, the students here are the cream of the crop. Uh, they provide the faculty with the motivation to keep on going. Uh, the achievements, their achievements put a smile on the faces of uh, and truly enhance the program standing in our college community. It really gives, I mean, the students are why the professors are here. And uh, they, these ladies and gentlemen here this morning have really enriched our lives. And we hope that we've been a small part of, part of that enrichment for their lives as well. Speaking about our faculty, let me introduce some, our, to you our full-time faculty members. Uh, again, Kim Landon, our pro Associate professor, uh, professor of Journalism and our RSI Executive Director. She is also our advisor for the Society for uh, Collegiate Journalism. 
Cecilia Friend, professor of journalism, right over here. And our hot bod uh, <laughs> uh, journalism faculty member, uh, David Shinatri. Is <laughs> Yeah. Make, make sure before you leave today you take a copy of yesterday's uh, tangerine that is uh, labeled the gangrene because of April Fool's Day. And in there there's an interesting top, what, top 20 list? Top 10 list? <laughs> well, I just, I wasn't on that list, so, you know, okay. <laughs> Okay, and don't get any ideas, Chris, wherever you are next year. Okay, no. <laughs> I like my, uh, you know, being uh, in the background there. Okay, uh, who else? Oh, yes, we have Paul MacArthur, uh, uh, Assistant Professor of Public Relations, also, also our sports con man. And we have a new faculty member, Elizabeth Warfel, who is uh, taking over public relations. Doesn't she look like one of our students? <laughs> I feel so old. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we have some other guests with us. Uh, uh, faculty member Glenn Coyne over here. Uh, Glenn? He teaches in our journalism and is a, an investigative reporter at the Syracuse newspaper. So we're glad he's here. Also, we have a top notch journalism um, uh, practitioner, Patty Louise. All right back over there. She's responsible for David's, uh, you know, elevated status as hot bot on campus. Uh, uh, and uh, she's our advisor to the Tangerine. She also teaches a number of our journalism classes. Uh, we have uh, Mark Kovacs from our uh, alumni and parent relations director. <laughs> Anthony Valenti from our, uh, he's our director of development. And the man behind the camera, Keith Henry, who is also an alum of our program. Uh, and we have Larry Pasilio, who is our photographer right here. And uh, welcome. Okay, I'd like to briefly provide you my uh, welcome and congratulations to our, our outstanding alumnus, Luke Lambert, right over here. Luke. Luke is a 1986 graduate of UC and president of Gibson Cell <coughs> Public Relations uh, Agency. It's a global concern. His wife, Kelly, is also a 1986 graduate uh, and an OT major. They uh, live currently at Cross River, New York with their sons, Dean and Jack. Uh, and we'll be hearing more about Luke in just a little bit. Uh, but I just wanted to welcome here this morning. We've, uh, he was with our students all, most of the, all, the whole day yesterday, uh, having lunch with them, and then also uh, uh, talking to students in a couple of classes. I sat in on one yesterday. It was great, really wonderful advice, and uh, it's great. We bring in professionals all the time for our students to make sure that what those professors are saying in the classroom matches up with reality, and it sure does. So we, we love bringing back the alums. Uh, you'll, uh, let's see. A couple of housekeeping announcements. Uh, feel free, and seriously, feel free to get up during the ceremony, because it's, it's going to be a little bit of time here, to uh, get some more breakfast items in, coffee and juice. So anytime, please just, you know, circle around and get over to the food again. Uh, the bathrooms are located outside of the doors over here and through here. So just wander back a little bit and you'll find the bathrooms. Uh, award winners, we'd like you to please, and remember to do this, otherwise we'll be grabbing you back, uh, is when you come up for your award, what we want you to do is just, you know, we'll step out here and we're gonna pose for a quick photo. Okay, so just remember we need to do that. Uh, Okay, and my dear uh, young ladies and gentlemen out there, you're inside your envelope will be a check and the address of the donor that you should be sending a thank you note to. So please try to do that today or tomorrow. Don't put it off. Uh, we really want to thank those people who have been funding these awards. And scholarship winners, your check is a gift from the RSI 
But to arrange your scholarship, to actually get that moolah, you must see financial aid to make those arrangements. Okay? All right. Uh, now, we will start with the actual awards. I'm going to actually start off with a couple of them before I get to sit down and continue drinking my coffee. Okay. Uh, I'm very honored to be able to give out the RSI Faculty Award. This award is given to the graduating senior with the highest GPA. The recipient of this award today is a journalism major with a whopping 3.86 GPA. My comments are going to be brief because guess what? He's going to get another award later on, okay? Uh, unbelievable as it may seem. Excuse me, I got a little nose drip here. The best way to describe this year's honoree is that he makes his own opportunities. In 2009, he founded and is editor-in-chief of The Equalizer, a website dedicated to coverage of professional women's soccer news. He earned his expertise in women's soccer by first working for the Hudson Valley Quick Strike Lady Blues soccer, semi-pro women's soccer team. As its director of communications, the vast knowledge he has accumulated about the world of professional women's soccer has afforded him the opportunity to write uh, for Sports Illustrated uh, <coughs> .com concern. Uh, so he's actually been uh, uh, authoring some columns about women's soccer for Sports Illustrated. It, at Utica College, he has been involved with the Tangerine as its online editor, and to say, and to say that this summer, uh, he is also going to be coming out with his first authored publication entitled Girls Play to Win, which will be uh, is a publication aimed at the elementary school kids uh, to teach them a little bit about soccer. Congratulations to this year's honoree, Jeff Kasuf. You know what, I was just handed a note, and uh, my bad. Uh, I forgot to introduce to you our uh, another distinguished guest here, and I had it in my notes, and I just got a little nervous, obviously, but uh, we have a member of the UC Board of Trustees with us here this morning, and his name is Ken uh, Bell. Ken, I'm sorry, stand up, thanks. You know, Ken, I taught your daughter for three years, and I had no idea that I was teaching, you know, I could have gotten fired, you know, if I had done something wrong. <laughs> but anyway, Sydney, thank you for, you know, not, not getting me fired over these past few years. <laughs> No, I, I, I'm kidding. Okay, uh, the next award, the final award that I'm going to present to you is the Fred and Corinne uh, Gates RSI Achievement Award. The Fred and Corinne Gates RSI Achievement Award is an award to recognize the students whose achievements uh, fulfill Robert Browning's precept that one's reach much, must exceed one's grasp. This year's recipient has been a public relations intern in the Marketing Communication Office at uh, Utica College, and she has held two other internships at Faxon St. Luke's Hospital Healthcare Center and the Unity Health Cent uh, System in Rochester. She has also been involved with Campus Life as the president mm -hmm. of the um, Chi, uh, Chi Be Beta Sigma sorority, uh, and she was also its public relations director. I am pleased to present uh, the Fred and Crin Greats RSI Achievement Award in public, uh, to public relations student Sydney Bell. Okay, uh, next on our list is 
it is Chris Cooper. Okay, Chris. Chris Cooper, our Tangerine Editor in Chief, want to come forward? My name is Chris Cooper, for those who didn't get it. <laughs> and, and I'll be presenting the award, um, Ruben, actually, I won't. I'll be presenting the Owen Kimura RSI Tangerine Award. <laughs> it was a year ago today that I met Alex and bombarded her to be um, our copy editor um, right before we were taking a picture. And she said yes, and a year, a year later, I'm... Um, not regretful. Um, Alex's dedication to the Tangerine is one that you just blows you back. She is a member of the theater productions, and she would practice, um, do what she has to do, and she'll come in at 2 a.m. to edit stories and make sure that we have them for um, when we need them. And she is so deserving of this award that it's not even funny. Um, so it is with great pleasure that I give this award to Alex Caldas. I'd like to call up the advisor for the Tangerine to present the next award, Patty Louise. Good morning. Uh, first award that I get to give out is the Mildred Schwartz RSI Tangerine Award. And this is going to go to senior Kristen Smith. Last year's editor-in-chief of the Tangerine, Jonathan Monfaletto, wanted a great idea wanted to recognize both his grandmother, who had very big contributions in his life, was a big influence, and a member of the Tangerine staff, or member of the Tangerine class, who had contributed to the quality of the paper. Those of you who know Kristen, um, we finally talked her into taking the class last semester, and it's no exaggeration that since her first day, she's been the go-to reporter. Uh, much of what appears on the front page has the byline of Kristen Smith with it, and including a well-done story just last week on Sodexo and the salt controversies. <laughs> As I said in class, it was fair and balanced and informative, which is what you want. But not only is she a good writer and, and someone that we rely on uh, probably a little more than she might like, she is, brings a positive attitude, she has great journalism skills, she is a joy to work with, and someone we're going to be very sorry to see leave. So Kristen, please come up and turn around. Now the other award I have to give, where are you, Danielle? Oh, there you are, okay. You know I'm gonna tell this story on you. Uh, the David Santora Memorial Award honors a former member of the Tangerine staff. Um, David was a senior when he passed away here at Utica College and uh, he's a member of the class of 1988. And his friends wanted to remember David by honoring someone on the Tangerine who in a sort of quiet way like David did improved the paper. When I saw Danielle's name, I thought, don't they know about the grilled cheese? <laughs> Those of you who don't know, Danielle wanted a grilled cheese sandwich last semester. <laughs> yeah. She couldn't get it from the cafeteria. So Danielle, who, who has opinions and can express them, wrote a column about why she couldn't get a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> and now some of the parents might not know, or you may have heard from your students that this semester the food is so much better, and that's because after 33 years, Utica College fired the place that was doing, that did not give Danielle the grilled cheese sandwich <laughs> and brought in a new company. So in a very unquiet way, she had a big impact. <laughs> but in other ways, she, she has been a member of the Tangerine since her freshman year and in so many ways makes it better. She speaks up on a number of things and 
does a, a great and wonderful job. So mm -hmm. glad to have you get this award. All right, now I'd like to call up Professor Paul MacArthur, the chairman of the PRJ department, to present the next awards. Thank you. There are three rules in public speaking. Be brief, be brilliant, be gone. I will be two of the three. Brilliant, I will not promise. However, this will be brief and I will be gone. The first award is, that I will be presenting is the RSI Student of Promise Award, and this was created uh, for the outstanding PR, for, excuse me, the student from the Mohawk Valley who shows exceptional promise for success in public relations and journalism. And this award will be going to John Engel. And John, who's seated over there, uh, I first noticed John in my sports and media class, and I noticed some of his comments are pretty insightful. And then I read a paper, I'm like, holy cow. This guy is smart, this guy can write, got a lot of talent. And then he, got the, he did the exams and got A's on everything. And I'm like, okay, this guy is really, really good. So John got an internship with the Boilermaker last summer. And they hated him so much, they hired him. <laughs> so this is the kind of talent that we're dealing with. John is someone who I have absolutely no question in my mind will be a tremendous success. And I'm very happy to present this award to him. <laughs> trying to be gone, trying to be gone. <laughs> the next award goes to three different people. It is the RSI Writing Award, and this is, of course, for someone who can write well. Our first person who's being awarded, Christian Bocciccio. Christian is a wide receiver on the football team, and that, of course, means he's a bit of a diva. You know, if a defensive back touches him, he's like, hey, flag, flag. <laughs> All right. But nonetheless, Christian is at you. But in the classroom, Christian is anything but a diva. Christian works hard. He comes in prepared, usually. And he absolutely has, his writing is absolutely fantastic. His papers, again, are very, very good. And I'm very happy to present this award to him. Next on our list, Gino Gerentino. Gino is what we call affectionately a radio geek. And Gino, I'm with you. I'm a brother in arms. I've been a radio geek since the fifth grade, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing for me to be giving this award to him. How good is Gino's writing? Well, he's got stories that he's written for radio and produced for radio that have aired on WRVO, WAMC, North Country Public Radio. He interviewed, did an informational interview with WRVO, and they called him back and said, you know, we think we want to talk to you about a job. This is an exceptionally talented student. Happy to give this to Gino Gerentino. Next recipient, Rocco Suba. So going back to sports in the media, I've got this kid in the class and he doesn't say a word. And if someone doesn't say a word, it's one of two things. Either they're really not paying attention, and you can tell usually when that's the case because they're sleeping, or you're afraid they're a serial killer or something. <laughs> um, in this case, however, Rocco is the guy who you read his paper and you're like, holy, I won't even say the word that I used. His writing is technically proficient. It is exceptionally insightful. The research is without peer. 
And we liked him so much, we recruited him for the program, and he joined. And we're really thrilled about that. Rocco, I'm pleased to give this award to you. Our next award recognizes students who have maintained their academic standing while involved in a variety of activities and experiences at Utica College. The first award goes to Renee Tomczak. Renee came in as a freshman with about 400 credits already. <laughs> and just, it is, it is. I'm an advisor. I'm like, okay, so you're already a senior. What do you want to do? Grad <laughs> let's just graduate you and you'll be done. And Renee has been working with the student newspaper, The Tangerine, maintaining a GPA. I'm not allowed to give it due to FERPA, but nonetheless, let me just say it's very high. And on top of that, um, she got an internship down in Washington, D.C., where she's working with this substandard publication you might have heard of called National Geographic. Um, so she's doing exceptionally well at National Geographic. And while she's working at National Geographic, Graphic, and I've seen her time sheet. She's putting in 40 plus hours a week. She's also taking a course there and writing a weekly column about her experiences in DC for the Tangerine, which are very cool. So I'd like to give this award to Renee Tomzak, but she's in DC. Accepting this award for Renee Tomzak is her mother. <laughs> Our next award goes to Rashida Hull. Rashida, I've got in my com law class, and Rashida is one of those kids who has great questions and is also someone that brings a certain a good amount of insight, and she's maintained a very good GPA, but she's also involved in a number of things. She's involved with the Tangerine. She's involved with SCJ, the Society for Collegiate Journalists. She's an RA, which means people either love her or they absolutely hate her, depending on <laughs> who she's writing up at that moment in time. She's also been involved with V-Day, Stop the Violence Against Women, the Black Student Union. She's been involved with Open Moments Poetry, the Women's Resource Center, and occasionally she sleeps. <laughs> this award goes to Rashida Hull. And I'll turn it over to Rashida now. Good morning. Good morning. Um, like he said, I'm the president for Society for Collegiate Journalists, and I'm presenting the Arthur H. Barrow Lowe Student Journalist of the Year, which is a national award from Society for Collegiate Journalists. Um, Barlow is a longtime SCJ executive director, and they named this after him. Um, this award is based on outstanding contributions to college journalism and is designed to allow SEJ chapters to bring national recognition to student journalists who meet the highest standards in ethics, service, leadership, and technical skill. When I first read the description, like words jumped out at me and I was like, I know who I need to nominate for this award. So with a prayer, I sent it off and the student got it. One of the faculty members wrote in a recommendation letter, and I quote, this student, this person brings a attitude to his work and education that makes me realize how lucky I am to have him as a student. He is cheerful, willing to accept any assignment, meets his deadlines well before a story is due, and frankly is one of the more gifted writers the Tangerine has had in years. His writing is clear, contains all the necessary information, and each article tells a story of a person or people beyond scores and stats. He is a wonderful um, he has a wonderful future ahead of him as a writer. Autism might hold him back at times as he becomes a professional journalist in May. This will not be because of his limitation or fear, but the perceived limitations and fear of those who hold the key in staying, saying yes or no to opportunities to him. With that being said, I would like to present the Arthur H. Barrow Lowe National Student Award to Anthony J. O'Hagan. <laughs>
like to present Shinatri. Professor Shinatri. <laughs> No, to be called HB. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Rashida. I'd like to uh, extend my congratulations as well to uh, all the winners and uh, and AJ. That is a fantastic accomplishment. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I would just like to say um, what the what Pat said earlier to start off with Mark is really true that when we have um, we have all you guys gathered here I think she called you the cream of the crop but it's really nice to see this talented group as you move along through your four years and see you develop and 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 turn into uh, great uh, great you come as great students but uh, great um, graduates soon to be graduates who will, I, I'm sure will make a uh, impact on the world Sometimes we get um, a group that come in sort of midstream, and they really uh, they really infuse the program with their talent and their uh, their dedication. And the next group of students awards that I'm going to give uh, these three students fall into that category. We have two transfers and someone who uh, took some time off and came back, and they've really uh, brought a new energy, I think, to the program, especially to my classes. And so I'm I'm uh, really thankful for that. And you know, they've made them better classes and made them more fun, frankly. Uh, so the first award that I'd like to give is going to Miranda McKee. She's this year's winner of the Ed Metesky RSI Award. And this award was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as your program says, created by Jim Green, who was class of 1954, in honor of his late classmate to honor a student who showed promise in the field of broadcasting. Now, um, this is now baseball season. And, uh, and Miranda, I would say, is the broadcasting equivalent of what they call in baseball the five-tool player. Uh, she, is, and AJ knows what the five tool player is. <laughs> She's the complete package. She has all the skills she needs to succeed in this field. And it all starts with her ability to write, to understand her story, and to write it well. And she does that uh, in broadcasting without peer. She's also the president of the PRSSA, and she's done outstanding work interning across the street for the Marketing and Communications Department. Um, I'm sure no matter what field she chooses to go into, I have absolutely no doubt that she will be a great success. And so I would like to present this award to Miranda McKee. I also promised that I'll, I'll really try not to confuse you and our next winner, <laughs> uh, which I've done more than once over the last couple of years. The next award is the Gary and Jeannie LaBella RSI Transition Award. Excuse me, not the... <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, the Gary and Jeannie LaBella RSI Transition Award. For a moment, I thought I was going right to, the, to Gino. Um, and I, I, I've never confused Miranda and Gino. Uh, uh, this award uh, was established by uh, uh, Gary LaBella and, and his wife Jeannie Wickline. Uh, they were both class of 1975 and they established the award to recognize a transfer student for excelling in making the transition. And this year's award uh, goes to Rachel Murphy. And uh, in just two years, Rachel's made herself a, a big part of the program, a prominent part of our, uh, our PRJ program. And um, I would say one of the things that Rachel brings to the table is stick to -itiveness. That is, Rachel starts a project and she works really hard to get it done. And she really puts in a great amount of effort. Um, and, uh, and if for some reason it doesn't work out exactly right, she doesn't make excuses either. And uh, as, as we all know, we've heard plenty of excuses. We, got a, we could put a book together on some of the excuses we heard. Not from anybody in this room, of course. And especially not from Rachel. So those two attri attributes are two things that will serve her very well as she goes out into the professional world. So Rachel, congratulations. Come on up. Okay, now finally it's my honor to give the Flaherty RSI Creativity Award to Gino Gerentino. 
Now, Paul has already spoken of uh, Gino, and you've had a chance to uh, <coughs> meet him and see that great picture-taking form <laughs> he has. Um, Gino has an outstanding academic record, as evidenced by his, uh, his sky-high GPA. He's also a guy who seeks out challenges. Um, who else would take organic chemistry over the summer just for fun? That is true, isn't it, Gino? I only had one source on that. You should never do that. But uh, um, In addition uh, to his academic work, Gino's uh, written a humor column for the uh, Tangerine. He's also, believe it or not, published a couple things in the Onions Online uh, edition. Um, and uh, Gino has been my right-hand man in establishing the New York Reporting Project at Utica College. And as Paul indicated, his radio stories have been heard from Syracuse in the west to almost Boston, Worcester, Massachusetts in the east, from the Canadian border down to the New York City suburbs. And that's pretty impressive, and not too many college kids can say that. So uh, Gino, uh, come on up. It's, uh, it's a great honor to give you this award. None of us have ever seen Gino in a suit coat before. Or yeah. long pants. Yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> uh, and I would like now to turn over the podium to uh, Liz, Liz Warfel, a public relations professor. Good morning. Okay, so the next award is the Joanne Rappel RSI Research Award. This award is presented in honor of alumna Joanne Rappel and recognized as an upperclassman for excellence in research and writing. Um, this award is being presented to Avion Ashton. Uh, Avion came to U.S. or to the, the United States on a UC um, to UC on a field hockey scholarship from her home country of Trinidad and Tobago, and. Um, I asked her why she chose Utica College, and uh, she said it's because it allowed her to play field hockey but really focus on her academics, and she's really done both remarkably well. For the second year in a row, she's been um, named to the Division Three All-Region Team for field hockey, which is a really, really big accomplishment. Um, but today we're giving her this award for her, her accomplishments academically, and most specifically for her research. She did an excellent, excellent research project in my class last semester. Um, and they looked at, she and her teammate, um, her teammate, see it's already in there, it's in my head. She and her research partner did a project, um, a content analysis project on the portrayal of female athletes uh, in three newspapers during the 2010 Winter Olympics. And her research was just so precise. It's being published in an undergraduate research conference later this month. So we're very proud of Avion for that. <laughs> we're going to miss Avion next year. She's graduating uh, in May. And she'll have a public relations major with a sports com uh, concentration. and. Um, she will be the first one in her family to earn a college degree, which is a huge accomplishment. So, congratulations, Avon, for this award. The second award I'm presenting today is the Gagliardi RSI Award. Um, this award, established by Anthony Gagliardi, who is the class of 1952, is given to a student who reflects his beliefs that expertise in public relations practice is only made better by an appreciation for the arts. And this award is being presented to Michael Bone. Um, I've had the pleasure of having Mike in a couple of classes. Where is Mike? Right there. Um, I've had a, the pleasure of having him in a couple of my classes, and I can tell you he has an exceptionally professional attitude about his work. He's really, you know, one of the most responsible students I've ever met. Um, you know, he also has a creative side, which is very important in this industry. Um, in his, he told me that in his first year at Utica College, he took up piano. 
Now, I've been playing piano for 20 plus years, and I think after about four years, I was maybe up to Mary Had a Little Lamb, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you know, something like that. Um, Mike has been playing for less than four years, and he has won, won contests, written his own music, um, and he's really establishing himself as a solo pianist. So that's a huge accomplishment. It's, it's very impressive. Um, he also has worked at UC's campus radio station, WPNR, and this year he's holding the title of programming director. So he's, he's really kind of taken over and helped that station grow since his um, time on campus. And true to professional form, Mike asked me to extend his thanks to Dean Swan, Doug Croft, Elaine Varga, and professors MacArthur, Friend, Habel, and Downing. So Mike, we extend our congratulations to you for this award. And the last award that I'm presenting um, this morning is the RSI Bruce Manning Spirit Award. This award was created in memory of Bruce Manning, and it's given to a student who has immense school spirit for Utica College, just like Bruce did. Um, this award is being presented to Tamira Smith. Tamira is involved in numerous campus activities. She is the lifestyle and entertainment editor for the student-run campus newspaper, The Tangerine. Um, she's on student council and PRSSA, president of Women in a New Direction, and an RA. So she's very busy. <laughs> um, but the reason that I thought, there were two reasons I thought Tamira really deserved this award. The first was my first experience at a Utica College basketball game. <laughs> and I showed up and Tamira was easy to spot because she was in the front row on the bleacher, no, literally on the bleacher, like standing on the bleacher. And she was yelling for her pioneers and against the other team, and very passionately. Um, the second reason was because during homecoming this fall, Tamira showed up to my research class every day decked out head to toe in UC gear. And when I say head to toe, I mean head to toe. She had on tracks and antlers, you know, the moose antlers. <laughs> so I've never met somebody who had more school spirit than Tamira. Um, Tamira is a junior this year, so we're looking forward to having her and her school spirit back next year. Congratulations, Tamira. to introduce Cecilia Friend. Hi everybody, so good to be here. Favorite event of the year for sure. Um, today I'm going to present this year's George Jones RSI Outstanding PRJ Student Awards. These awards recognize the outstanding PRJ students in each class for demonstrated excellence in academics, research, and writing. Uh, our outstanding freshman this year is Louis de Leon. The first thing you have to know is that we don't give out this award every year. It's really hard to make an impression on the faculty in the first few months um, you're at school, but Louis has done just that. Uh, he's getting bylines in the campus newspaper and working at the campus radio station, and he already has high hopes of becoming Tangerine Sports Editor, of hosting a sports talk radio show on the WPNR, and uh, before taking on ESPN after graduation. Of <laughs> he's jumping right in there. Uh, he also hasn't waited to begin a professional career. He's writing for the Bleacher Report, an online sports site this semester. And he has gotten involved in other areas on campus, including tutoring for the uh, UC's Opportunity and Young Scholars <coughs> programs. So he's pretty impressive for a first year student and I'm very happy to uh, honor him with this year's PRJ Outstanding Freshman Award. <laughs> The dreaded gripping grin. I tell my students never to take pictures like that. Uh, our outstanding sophomore this year is Alyssa Scott. 
Uh, Alyssa has been a very high performing student with a, oh, I'm not supposed to say the GPA? 3.8 in her major classes. <laughs> Though still a sophomore, she has already made herself indispensable at the Tangerine. She is this year's lifestyle and entertainment editor and has made her voice heard in editorial decisions throughout the paper. And if you know Alyssa, you know her, she has a voice to be reckoned with. Uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more uh, from her as her career at the paper and, and outside um, Utica College continues. Um, I just want to add one thing. I've had the pleasure of having Alyssa in my class, my publication design class this year, and I must say she has as strong a flair for design as she does for writing. She's great. So join me in honoring uh, our very talented Alyssa Scott. Our outstanding junior is Chris Cooper, the dynamic, charismatic editor of The Tangerine. Um, Chris worked his way up through various positions at the paper and is this year's editor-in-chief. Chris has gathered around him a great staff and together they have made uh, strides in making The Tangerine a strong news source for the campus community. Uh, and I'm happy to, to announce that his journalistic and leadership abilities yesterday won him a second stint as editor. Something, <laughs> something only two students before him have achieved in the 65 year history of The Tangerine to be editor twice. So I'm very happy to be able to give this outstanding junior award to Chris Cooper, very well deserved. We have two outstanding senior award winners this year, Jeff Kasuth, who you've met already, and Devorn Hormacu. Uh, you've already heard a bit about Jeff's accomplishments. Uh, if we had to list them all, this breakfast would turn into lunch and maybe even dinner. Uh, Jeff has done journalism from his dorm room in the last three years, and uh, he's probably done more than some professionals have. That's in addition to playing soccer and keeping up the highest GPA in the major. So let me just tick off a couple of things that Professor Swan didn't mention. I did want to say that that book, that, that short book that he wrote on women's soccer for elementary school kids, it's part of a series called Girls Play to Win, and you can find it on Amazon if you're interested in that. Uh, he writes a weekly column for Sports Illustrated during soccer season and won a 2010 Student Writing Award from the National Soccer Coaches Association for his first Sports Illustrated column. That Equalizer website on women's soccer that he founded uh, has become the top source for women's professional soccer news and he now has five contributing writers and has added a weekly podcast. He does freelance PR for a slew of minor league soccer teams in the Northeast. He writes about soccer and other sports for the Syracuse Post Standard and the Observer Dispatch here in Utica. And uh, not to neglect his campus paper, as Pat mentioned, he is online editor for The Tangerine. Jeff is really making a name for himself as one of the leading women's professional soccer, soccer columnists in the country. And he's a great guy. He's upstanding, ethical, well-rounded, personable, and passionate about what he does. Head soccer coach Joe Calabrese called him the model student athlete. So we are very proud to award Jeff this year's Outstanding Senior Award. If Jeff is the face of um, Utica College off campus, Devorn is its face on campus. <laughs> Devorn exudes the pioneer spirit. He's been an unmistakable presence since the day he arrived, literally. Kim and I remember the day he showed up on campus for orientation, and we knew right then he was going to be a contender, or a handful, or both. And he's turned out we were, we were right on both counts. Uh, he was a contender for freshman uh, class president, and his exuberance won the hearts of his classmates, and he won over the teachers too. Uh, 
The PRJ faculty have given him the George Stone Award for Outstanding Freshman, for Outstanding Sophomore. In his junior year, he got the RSI Simon Scholarship Award, and this year, of course, he's going to be our Outstanding Senior. Of course, then there are the days when we open the Tangerine and read an article ted headlined, What's That Brown Spot on Your Nose? Uh, DeVorn had written a very brazen, I might say, step-by-step -step guide for other students to effectively brown nose your teachers. <laughs> and stuff that I recognize that he had tried on me. Uh, yes, he is Mr. UC. He's worked as a UC ambassador every year, as a student coordinator for UC summer and fall and orientation and now he's senior class president. He was also president of the Society of Collegiate Journalists and is active in PRSSA. And he's not just um, Mr. UC on campus. He has represented UC off campus from getting the Mohawk Valley Ad Club Award to presenting his research findings at the RSI Communication Conference and even a stint in London as an intern uh, in a digital marketing firm there. The campus won't be the same without you, DeVorn, and congratulations on being this year's outstanding. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I also have the honor of introducing one more award winner today, and uh, the recipient of the John Barron's RSI Print Journalism Scholarship to Catherine Gleitzman. Uh, this award, established in honor of the founder of our journalism program, J uh, Jack Behrens, goes to a journalism major who has demonstrated traits essential for success in print journalism. And Katie's got what it takes. Uh, Katie's all about the written word in all its forms. She joined up with the Tangerine as a reporter and became its managing editor. She's freelance for the local Utica Phoenix. She's involved in the Ampersand, which is the college's literary magazine, and she's even writing for UC's Office of Communications. She's a member of the Society for Collegiate Journalists and the Harold Frederick English Society. And last but not least, at least to me, Katie has been my dogged student assistant this semester, helping me update my editing book. Uh, she'd like to be an editor one day, and the PRJ faculty have confidence that she will do just that. And so we award Katie's this year John Barron's RSI Print Scholars Journalism Scholarship. And now I would like to introduce our next presenter, Jim Leach, a graduate of Utica College in 1967, a former member of the RSI board, and a former uh, vice president for communication at Colgate uh, College, College Gate University. Are you retired now? And, and now retired. So welcome, Jim. Duncan was a big man on campus in the middle 1960s. He was someone we all looked up to, uh, and not just because he was 6'6". He, he seemed 6'6 to me. <laughs> there was no journalism major at UC when Duncan was a student, so the Tangerine was staffed by PR students, which is not to say that the Tangerine was a house organ. It was a newspaper, and Ray Simon was on our case, insisting on reporting that was complete, accurate, and objective. There was no doubt, so, so we could have a working uh, understanding of what made the press tick. Uh, Ray would post a typed, often scathing critique of each issue of the Tangerine on the bulletin board the day we published. And he wasn't above extending those journalistic discussions into the classroom, challenging his PR students if there were a lesson to be made of it. Duncan thrived in that demanding environment, and he progressed through the chairs at the Tangerine, serving as managing editor as a junior and editor-in-chief by the time he was a senior. He was fully Simonized by then, and Duncan was himself a mentor and taskmaster who led by example, and he was the best writer on the paper. As Professor Simon recalled earlier this week, uh, Duncan was also an excellent student who, in Ray's words, knew what to say, and that was a survival skill in a Simon-led <laughs> class. One uh, added fact that distinguished Duncan, uh, Duncan's success all through college, he made his mark while he was also working full time. And he didn't uh, flip burgers or load trucks like a lot of the rest of us. His was a real job. 
writing, producing, and recording advertising for WRUN, one of Utica's three major radio stations. It's not an exaggeration to say that you could almost not turn on your radio in Utica in those days and hear Duncan's voice promoting something. Frank and I were talking about that earlier. And what a voice. It resonated with believability and confidence and unaffected authority. Duncan's wife told me the other day that she used to tell him that you could be the next Tom Brokaw. And we always wondered why he didn't head off to a major market. In his career after UC, Duncan's voice and his bearing made him a presence wherever he went. His aura was only enhanced by the fact that his shirts were always freshly starched, his trousers were creased, and his shoes were spit shined. I shined a pair of shoes last night just for the heck of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was, that was a throwback, Tony said, uh, to his days before UC when he was driving, he was an Army enlisted man driving a general around Oklahoma. That combination of qualities plus his drop dead sense of humor, impeccable timing, and thorough preparation made Duncan everyone's first choice for the master of ceremonies at what seemed like every major event in the Mohawk Valley, including Professor Simon's retirement dinner in 1985, when generations of former students gathered to toast Ray. That night, as always, Duncan struck the perfect blend between humor and reverence, dignity and lightheartedness. It was as though Duncan had each of us in mind, letting us in on his conversation with Ray in that very public moment. The founding of the Raymond Simon Institute emerged from sentiments embodied in that event more than 25 years ago. Duncan was a charter member of the RSI board and told me more than once that the responsibility amounted to doing whatever Ray says. Yeah, still does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Duncan was secretary of the board until his death. He was a true resource to Ray and to the other members of the RSI board. When Duncan received the first outstanding PRJ uh, Alumnus Award, Professor Simon expressed in his words, ongoing respect and appreciation for all you have done for our public relations degree program and for me personally. Duncan's professional career included management positions at Matt's Brewery, where he uh, helped develop the tour center and gift shop, at Liggetts and Page, the predecessor to the Page Group, at Utica Rome Cellular, where he served as general manager of a startup that grew under his leadership to become Advantage Cellular in marketing and PR for commercial travelers insurance and in communications and marketing for Zogby International. With all his skills, I always wondered why Duncan didn't go off to a major market like New York or Chicago or LA uh, to make his fortune. And Ray said that he felt Duncan could have been a success uh, wherever he went. But Tony told me that he stayed in the Mohawk Valley so that Tony and their kids, Frank and Kristen and Thomas, could stay close to Tony's family. That decision certainly benefited this community, where Duncan's volunteer activities included leadership in the JCs, president of the Mohawk Valley Ad Club, and president of the Utica Symphony. But it was for his many personal kindnesses that he will be best remembered, like helping one of his former tour guides, Michael Korn, a New Hartford science teacher, apply to NASA's Challenger astronaut program. I'll never forget standing in a very long line <clears throat> to pay respects to Dunk's family in May 2006 and hearing the conversations of happy people all around me talking about how he had touched their lives. Uh, I'll close with one of those stories of my own. The Club Stanick used to stand at the corner of Burstone and French Roads where Friendly's is right now. And we of the Tangerine staff probably stopped there too often after late night editorial sessions <clears throat> to research Matt's <laughs> premium. <laughs> but it did make us regulars with, a, with whatever standing that might imply. There was a blind student at UC at the time and she showed up at the club one night with her guide dog. In his gruff voice, the bar bartender turned to her and said, no dogs. And without missing a beat, Duncan said, the dog goes, we go. And that ended the conversation and won him yet another friend. Uh, AJ, from all I've read about you, you are just the right choice to receive the inaugural Duncan McCulley Award. Congratulations and thank you for all that you do for you. <laughs> I'm up here all the time, so I'm having, as I keep telling 
Dean Swan, I'm having control issues. Because <laughs> I, I want to, you know, get over here and tuck everybody's everything in and all that. Uh, I'm, I'm Kim Landon. We've all been introduced. Welcome. It's so nice to see you all here. This is, as someone else has said, or many people have said, our, our really premier uh, event of the, the year. And it just makes us all sort of happy you know, at the end, and I, I think you're probably getting that already, right? You're, you get, I'm hoping you're, you know why this makes us so happy. I, um, I'm giving uh, three awards. Um, the first award that I am giving is also named for John Behrens, uh, whose name you've heard before. Uh, he founded the journalism program at Utica College, retired as our journalism professor, and uh, had a distinguished career as a freelance writer, still does, lives in Clinton. Um, uh, when he retired, um, uh, we created this award to recognize a particular kind of student who seemed attracted to his magazine writing course. For many years, he attracted adult students to that course who were looking to exercise their creative juices. He noticed that these particular students face special challenges. They often balance jobs and families along with their college courses and did exceptionally well. The RSI created the award in his name to recognize the personal and academic achievements of the non-traditional student who, like the mythical phoenix, often finds new life through their college courses. This year's recipient is Tricia Barone. She works full-time as project manager in the Utica College Office of Advancement. Uh, before beginning studies at Utica College, she attended Herkimer County Community College um, and now is here as a PR major. Uh, she has a, also a very high GPA, um, which is a 366. Uh, <laughs> let me use the words of her supervisor, her boss, Laura Casamento, um, to tell you more about why she deserves this award, this is, this is, this is uh, some of what Laura said about her. She said quite a bit about her, and I, I edited it down a little bit because of time. Um, if there's one word to describe Tricia, it is determined. In addition, she is incredibly loyal to her friends, her coworkers, and her family. In terms of balancing her life, she was always here, on time, ready to work hard. I've come to think of this award over the many years we've given it as the Wind Beneath Your Wings Award. I think of this award as the RSI's small way of recognizing this kind of student who sometimes toils in anonymity, working hard to balance a lot of things, as well as attending classes, not always involved in all of the extracurricular things that you've heard our other students are involved in, but very much needing our support and encouragement. So for all her success in all that she does, please join me in recognizing Tricia Barone. You can probably tell she's going to be a little busier soon. <laughs> uh, uh, the next two scholarships that I'm going to give are, um, you know, let me put it this way. I notice that when the students get their awards, th there's all this buzz about, you know, they sort of have some hierarchy among the awards that they, they think they've created. Every award is equal and important, and we labor truly to select the students who fit that award, and, um, and you are all outstanding. Um, the scholarships perhaps are a little, maybe, if there is any hierarchy, they are perhaps a little more uh, toward the, the top of that very equal pile, because uh, they are more substantial awards and, um, and recognize some very particular characteristics. Uh, the first one is the Ben and Jean Kimura RSI Scholarship. You may have noticed throughout the program that you've seen the name Owen Kimura 
uh, associated with a number of awards. Owen Kimura is a 1953 alumnus uh, who has been exceptionally generous to our program and in creating awards to recognize many, many kinds of achievement. Um, and this, in some ways, is really um, his, his, major, uh, his major effort to help out a student. Um, he gave it in memory of his parents. And it rewards a student who's a, um, attained outstanding academic record and demonstrated exemplary personal and professional qualities. Again, I think of this as our character award. When I think of this award, I try to think of a student who I think has exceptional character. Um, and, you know, I, I looked up to see what that actually means because, you know, I think we sort of know what character <coughs> means, but it's, you know, it's one of those things that's hard to define. I found a little definition that says six points of character are trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. This year's recipient is Victoria Cruz Griffith. She's a junior journalism major from Port Chester, New York, who also has a very high GPA, but I'll start behaving myself. Uh, her record provides more evidence of why she deserves this award. And again, it's, it's a long record, but I'm going to mention a few things that I think stand out. Um, she joined the, the Tangerine when she wasn't a journalism major, became photo editor, changed her major, and this year is managing editor. Um, she's also taken on uh, from its very distinguished founder, the presidency of the Autism Awareness Club. I think you probably know who the founder is. Um, and is chair of a very important committee on campus that I think in many ways really speaks to this award. So chair of the Residence Hall Judicial Board, which is students judging other students um, on their behavior. Um, Victoria more than deserves this very special scholarship. Congratulations, Victoria. Uh, by its name, you can probably tell that uh, the Raymond Simon Scholarship is, um, in some ways, you know, our sort of premier award. It was established longer ago than any of our other awards by the Public Relations and Journalism Alumni in 1975 to honor Professor Raymond Simon. Now, we were having a little conversation last night because our outstanding alumnus, who you're going to meet in a few minutes, is a past winner of this award. It was established in the year I got my undergraduate degree at Utica College, and I didn't win it. <laughs> Don't think I have ever forgotten that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it goes to a student with an excellent academic record, high quality participation in extracurricular activities associated with the major, and promise for success in the field of public relations. When we select this recipient, we look for a student who will carry Professor Simon's legacy into their career and represent Utica College in the world over time. It's no coincidence that many past recipients of this scholarship have later received our outstanding PRJ Alumnus Award, including, as I mentioned, today's recipient. This year's recipient more than measures up to the standards set by his predecessors. Christopher Cooper is a junior PR journalism major from Brooklyn, New York, with a very distinguished GPA. He learned yesterday, we already told you, that he will join a very select group of Tangerine editors who have served two years in that position. Um, there, and as Cecilia said, we, we're saying the same thing. Uh, I looked back over the records and we can only come up with two others who have ever been given the position two years in a row. Um, in addition, Christopher's been president of the Society for Collegiate Journalists. He also is a resident assistant. He's won awards from this group before, the Ruben Teitelbaum Award, and as you know, he was this year's outstanding junior. Uh, he is going to be holding an internship this summer, and he's got some ideas that I'm hoping to influence in some other directions, um, but he'll be doing an internship somewhere and making a mark uh, for sure. Um, please join me in recognizing this year's recipient of RSI's most prestigious scholarship, the Raymond Simon Scholarship, Christopher Cooper. <laughs> Thank you. So, 
Whoa, all the, this, the fun has just flown by, hasn't it? It's just gone, it looked like a long program and, and we, have, uh, we have just enjoyed celebrating these students. I'm going to now introduce to you uh, a member of the RSI Board of Trustees, former faculty member in our department, now Dean of, I'm not gonna say it right, but the School uh, Pratt School of Art, that do, is that right? <laughs> I don't know. I'll uh, you as always yeah, he'll, he'll tell you everything I said wrong. Uh, I think we were siblings in another life, Baber and I. Um, Robert Baber is going to uh, introduce our outstanding alumnus because Bob and I both had Luke in class, and uh, he will now tell you who you're going to hear from. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be here. And uh, Kim is upset that she didn't win the uh, Simon Scholarship. Um, I didn't win anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, look where I was, we ended up. Right? Right, right. I, was, uh, I think I was the classic underachiever, and Kim was the classic overachiever when we were in school together, uh, a year apart. Uh, we later wound up being office mates here at Utica College for three years. and. Uh, Last night at dinner, Luke was remembering that fondly as a, a fun place to hang out for students. And um, I'm happy that that's, that's part of his, uh, his memory here. Uh, I'm gonna read you the, the uh, bio on Luke and then offer some comments about uh, what I know about this outstanding young man. Uh, Luke is the president of Gibbs and Cell Incorporated. Uh, as such, he sets the vision for that agency. He's responsible for the agency's global operations and performance, including the firm's client service, business development, and strategic growth initiatives. He plays an integral role in strategic planning, brand positioning, program design, and issues management for the agency's key clients. His diverse background of agency, corporate, and consulting experience brings clients a fresh perspective on their business with an eye toward fully integrated marketing and communications, communications programs with results that resonate in the boardroom. Luke is a prominent leader of the Council of PR Firms and serves as co-chair of its agency management committee. Last night he says that's the we get it done committee, I think. Um, that's, that's a great accomplishment for associate committees. Uh, this committee takes a strategic look at what trends stand to have the greatest impact on the PR profession and help members better anticipate the needs of the client marketplace. The annual signature event of this committee is the Council's Critical Issues Forum, where each fall, more than 200 agency leaders gather for a lively discussion and debate on the future of the industry. Uh, this is important work that's done by that committee and that group. Prior to joining Gibbs and Cell, Luke was Director of Public Relations and Advertising for UHY, a leading global accounting and consulting firm where he managed all marketing operations and served as company spokesperson. Prior to that, Luke was director of PR for Enable Software, then a leading integrated software manufacturing manufacturer, excuse me, serving major U.S. companies and the U.S. government. Luke graduated from Utica College, as you've heard, in 1986 and was hired by fellow PRJ alum Cos Malozzi. Luke returned to GNS in 1996 and became president in 2009. Cos remains CEO of Gibbs and Cell. Cos was the winner of this award just uh, two or three years ago, I believe. Luke is a member of Public Relations Society of America, where he regularly serves as a judge for the prestigious Silver Anvil Awards. He is a frequent industry speaker and contributor on topics of public relations and marketing trends. Luke met his wife, Kelly, here. Uh, you've heard that she's an 86 graduate, was an occupational therapy major, um, and they live in Cross River, New York with their sons, Dean, 19, and Jack. Uh, amazingly, these, these two young men, Dean and Jack, are outstanding athletes, uh, as I'm about to tell you. Uh, we, we are absolutely certain that that comes from Kelly. <laughs> and, and Luke freely admits that. Um, Dean is a freshman at Tufts University in Boston uh, and is a pitcher for the Tufts baseball team. Jack, while only a sophomore in high school, has already given his verbal commitment to play lacrosse at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It's amazing. Uh, Luke told me last night that his, uh, his son is listed as, I think, the number six prospect in lacrosse in the United States, and he's a sophomore. Um, 
Uh, Kelly practices her OT profession locally specializing in hand therapy. Uh, the entire family spends considerable personal time near Utica uh, in Limekiln, uh, if you know where that is, just north of Old Forge in the Adirondacks. Um, and uh, I want to just say a, a couple words about Luke. Uh, when he was a student here, uh, he, was, he was just an outstanding young man. Um, I'd, I'd like to jab him a little bit here or there, but I really don't have anything bad to say about Luke. Um, he was, he was uh, Kim described character uh, when describing this, this young lady award winner. Uh, Luke has all of those attributes, already, alre always has. Um, uh, and you know, one of the measures of his character, I think, is uh, I, I get to meet Luke once in a while when I'm in the city because Pratt Munson Williams Proctor uh, is an affiliate is an affiliate campus of Pratt Institute. That's my little promo. Uh, so I'm in Brooklyn occasionally uh, for work, and a couple times Luke and I have gotten together for coffee or a drink. And um, the measure of his character for me is that Luke doesn't talk about all of those wonderful accomplishments. He talks about his kids, right? and he asks about where's you know how's Larry doing, how's Terry doing. Uh, you ever see the guys, you know, the, his classmates who are, who are still in touch with Kim and I. Um, so he, he's an outstanding young man. He's a role model for all of you wonderful award winners. And importantly, if he offers you to stay in touch with him, be smart, do that. There's nothing more important about your, about your experience here other than the degree you carry, and maybe even more important than that, than this great network of Utica College PRJ alums. So, Luke Lambert. Thank you very much. Let's get some water here. Uh, let me just start by saying um, congratulations to everyone in this room. Uh, it was 25 years ago I was here on campus and um, sitting where you are right now, and I won that R RSI award. Welcome to the club. <laughs> 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 and um, you know, my mom was sitting next to me, beaming with pride. And uh, one of the things, um, the first thing she did is she wanted to um, meet the man Ray Simon, who had such a tremendous impact on my life. Uh, and I remember that day like it was just yesterday. And um, so what I did want to start by saying with this group is, you may not know it now, but this will be a memory that you'll remember the rest of your life. It's very, very important. Um, so just take a moment to reflect on that if you could. And then also, I also just want to say thank you because I'm deeply humbled and honored to be receiving this wonderful award. You know, Utica College really shaped my entire life. Professor Simon, who I got a chance to see yesterday and I was delighted, took me under his wing early on and he was really instrumental in helping me kickstart my career. Uh, he, along with Kim and Bob, um, they're the ones that said, take that open internship in the News Bureau. Really didn't give me an option. Um, they're the ones together that made sure I got my time in at the Tangerine which for me, they, they took a little extra pushing. Um, Ray Simon was the man that made that phone call to Harold Burson and said, please give this guy a summer internship. Um, now, I was a small town kid from Scotia, New York, not far from here, and that was a, a daunting experience for, for me. And we don't see enough of that right now from UC um, grads and, and students. So. That's a challenge, and it was daunting. I had to find a car, um, get down to New York City alone, uh, find an apartment in Austin, New York, through a friend of a friend, figure out a way to pay for it, and the way I paid for it is I painted the entire apartment upstairs uh, as payment for the summer. So I worked during the day, come back and paint at night and on weekends. Uh, that experience alone shaped another piece of, of my life, and I'll never forget it. You know, Ray also counseled me when I was torn on that first job, like I know many of you are, or will be, do I take the reporting job at the Amsterdam Recorder, or do I take that junior account executive job in PR 
in New York City, and and I did the latter. Um, and and Ray gave me some really great counsel there. And I and I will say this, and and Kim and Bob may not even know this. There isn't a career change that I made in my life, literally, where I didn't counsel, uh, get counsel from Ray. Uh, and 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 he and he did it in a way that wasn't telling you what to do, but you needed somebody in your life that you could bounce these kinds of things off of, and and he was that man for me. So I'll be forever grateful uh, and indebted. So I know you're sitting there, everybody, and you're saying. This guy had a lot of help along the way, too. <laughs> and I did. Um, but, you know, there are some things that I refuse to give Ray credit for and Bob and Kim credit for. And that's, you know, I found my wife <laughs> who lived in North Hall and was the OT major. I did that completely on my own. <laughs> they, um, but they all did approve of the choice, though. Uh, so that made me happy. Um, you know, fast forward to today, and times have changed incredibly. Um, although today they feel a little bit the same, but they, they have changed incredibly. Um, you know, my mom is, you know, as Kim remembers from a class, is still my hero. She was then, and she still is today. And she can't be here today. She would have been, um, but she, a couple of years ago, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and she's doing quite well and living in a memory care facility just outside of Albany. But I, I really wish she could have been here as well. My wife Kelly feels absolutely terrible about sending me here alone, uh, but we're involved in a, a weekend-long fundraiser at home that's really important to us, and sh we decided to have her stay behind and, and kind of uh, run herd on that, so uh, that, that was terrific for her. My two sons would have liked to have been here, um, albeit I must admit to just poke fun at the old man. <laughs> I think probably for no other reason. Uh, but Dean, who, who Bob said, he's a baseball player. Uh, they've got a, a three-game three, three series in, in Boston this weekend against Bates College, so hopefully he'll see some innings. And my younger son, Jack, um, his, they've got their first uh, lacrosse game of the season tonight underneath the lights against Crosstown rival Yorktown. So he, he had to stay behind for that. Uh, but that's a big game, and I'm going to be running home for that right after this. So. So here I am all alone, um, but I, I looked out here today, and I believe me, I looked into the eyes of parents especially, um, and I can relate, finally, to the pride that, that I see in this room. You know, it's, I remember, I, I just have one who's a freshman, and when I dropped him off, the immense pride uh, this fall that my wife and I felt. and. Um, and the pride that we feel every month that goes by, and I see him maturing as a young man, that I never thought the day would come, frankly, but it's starting to get there. <laughs> so, um, uh, but I, I looked at this around this room today, and I think that pride pales in comparison to what I've seen today. So I got a lot to look forward to. Um, the awards that your children have been given, um, and the leg up that they give, they've given themselves um, as they begin their journey in this profession is incredible. So. Um, again, sincere congratulations to all of the, the winners and, and, and their parents especially. Um, it's a start of something very, very big for you today, trust me. And um, you know, where the road from UC is going to take you, you have no idea. Um, but based on what I saw today and what I saw yesterday, you're well prepared to take that, to travel that road. So congratulations. Um, I wanted to give you some advice along the way, and Bob is a good setup man, because, um, and that's to stay in touch with UC alum. And it's not easy to do, I'll warn you, but you, you have to try to do it um, for friendship, um, for advice, and, and for networking. Kaz Malozzi, who was my boss for many years, who was a recipient of this award, as Bob mentioned, many years ago. He was also my first employer. That stint only lasted a couple of years. So don't burn bridges, stay in touch with people. And, and I did that for 10 years after I left Gibbs and Sell. And in 1996, I rejoined the firm and became president of the firm two years ago. And I have cause, a fellow alum to be. Uh, I'm extremely grateful to what he provided me as a, as a UC alum. So please don't forget that, it's, it's critical. Um, Rob Flaherty, another uh, a recipient of this award is president of Ketchum PR, um, 
Now, Rob and I serve on the Council for PR Firms, the Agency Management Committee together, and we, on any given day, could be competing head-to-head -head for business, um, but that UC connection still remains so important to both of us, and we recognize that practically every time we see each other. So um, just keep, again, keep that in mind. Now, unfortunately, all past award winners aren't as supportive. Um, last year's award winner, Larry Platt, um, Kim, Kim Landon shared with me an email. She invited Larry to, to take a, a short drive from Philadelphia to join us for dinner last night. And um, I, I saw an email with his reply. And, and I'll share just, I can only share a, one sentence of it because the rest of it it was not for publication, <laughs> but it said, uh, Larry said, unfortunately, as much as, I, as I'd like to join you, I believe I have to clip my toenails Friday night. <laughs> so, so another piece of advice, know who your real friends are <laughs> along that journey, please. Um, you know, yesterday I had a chance to, as you know, speak with a couple classes here on campus, and and we spent a good deal of time talking about something that's really important to me, and that's skill sets needed for communications folks into the future. And, um, and I shared some article, an article that I'd written on the very subject, and, and it, was, it was great for me to be able to talk about that. But more than any, I, I, I'm just so pleased that from what I saw and what I learned about all the changes going on here at the school, that this, and I'm, I'm thrilled to see that, that this program is preparing you, preparing you extremely well for your future, so uh, I felt terrific about that. I had a whole other section I wanted to talk about is another challenge, and that is to, you know, whatever you do with your degree is to make yourself stand out and talk about internships and all that. I'm gonna skip all that because this, this what I, based on what I heard today, you're already doing that. This, the, the award, and I know that's not true for the entire, you know, PRJ community, but for this room, it's incredible what I heard today. So showcase it. I mean, please don't hide what you've done and challenge yourself to step outside your comfort zone. Um, some of you, I know, are going to remain here in the Mohawk Valley and make a tremendous impact here. And others, you have a great opportunity to do what I did, you know, stretch, stretch that comfort zone a little bit um, and, and, and make a mark anywhere else you can in the world. Um, so that's a challenge and it's just something, it's a personal decision. but. Please give it some, some serious thought. Um, and then lastly, or one of the last things I want to talk about is this, the, the skill sets that you innately possess as digital natives is what, what I call you or we call you. And that you have this unique chance to come into a marketplace today that we didn't have. And, and you're going to come into a marketplace with digital and social media skills that your peers with more experience won't have. So please don't sell that short. Don't sell yourself and don't act like an entry-level employee. You have an opportunity to come in an organization like mine to, jo to join a part of a team as an experienced individual. So don't sell yourself short. Use that to really, really showcase your skills. And, but don't, it's not just about you know, keeping your Twitter account active, okay? And, and it, it's about understanding before you take that job where you can focus and how you can use those skills to make an impact. And, and don't be shy about, about showcasing those skills. Um, and then the last point I'll make is, um, is about the real world. And, uh, and it's don't let it intimidate you. Uh, you know, be extremely proud of what you've accomplished here today. I, I am, um, and you're not even my kids, and I'm so proud of, of what I saw here today. And, um, and, and another thing is know the weight that, and understand the weight that your degree in PR and journalism holds in our profession today and use that to make your mark. Um, Harold Burson, who just celebrated his 90th birthday, who um, he and Ray go way, way back. Rob Flaherty saw him a couple weeks ago and he said, you know, pound for pound, Harold Burson said, pound for pound, the UC PRJ program has produced some of the top PR people in our country today. And we talked a lot about this at dinner last night and we're gonna find out a way to make sure that keeps moving. 
um, because and to do anything less would be um, would dishonor so many people um, that have have really led the way for all of us. So congratulations again, and thanks for this wonderful honor. Okay, uh, we're going to present a plaque uh, to Luke Lambert for his professional achievements. The Raymond Simon Institute honors Luke Lambert, class of 1986, as the 2011 Outstanding Public Relations Journalist Alumnus at Utica College. Ladies and gentlemen, you made it through the ceremony. Uh, basically, what we want to do right now is ask every one of the award winners, the students with Luke and the faculty, to where do we go, Larry? Uh, if everyone is feeling hale and hearty, I would out like here. To do this out there. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll be fast. It's going to be cold, but uh, it makes it for a very nice photo outside. So bring your sweaters. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we'll be quick. So let's uh, immediately recess award winners outside and uh, get ourselves lined up for a photo. Okay, yeah, the door is around the corner where Katie is headed. Okay, there she is.